Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. So in this video, I will go through what I consider to be the most exciting features coming to Star Citizen in 2019. As always, a big thank you to my patrons. If you do want to support my channel further, do follow the link to my Patreon page below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content and follow me over on Twitch. Now, when it comes to the roadmap, obviously there is a chance that any of these features could slip from the patch and go to a later patch or even to next year. But CIG are confident that they can achieve all the features on the roadmap this year and actually add additional features instead. So kind of under promising and over delivering rather than what they used to do, which was over promise and under deliver. Pretty much a good idea in my book. With that said, let's have a look at the most exciting features in my opinion coming in 2019. So at number 14 is the playable female characters. This is coming at the end of this month in 3.5. It's at the bottom of my list purely because I don't plan to play as a female character, but it's on the list as seeing both males and females around the verse will add much needed diversity. It'll also be even more exciting when we finally get the Jean, the Banu and Taveran wandering around as well. At number 13 are the ships. Now, there's a lot of ships coming in 2019. If you want to see which ships specifically, I have done a separate video which is linked below. But instead of adding all the individual ships to the list, I thought it just to better add them as a whole. My most anticipated ships for this year are the Cutlass variants, the Hull Sea, and of course the Karak. So at number 12, which is pretty low down on my list compared to other people's, I'd expect, it's Salvaging. This is coming in 3.8. And I am looking forward to this mechanic more than the mining mechanic, but currently not too fussed until I see more on the feature. I am excited that it will add some much needed gameplay mechanics, but for now I can't even imagine how salvage gameplay will, will work, so I'm waiting till then to get hyped. Salvage is likely to be one of my favourite careers in Star Citizen, especially as I'm a Vulture owner, uh, so I'm hoping we get some info on salvage pretty soon. Now at number 11 is docking. Uh, this is specifically ship to ship docking and ship to station docking. I think ship to station is coming in 3.6 and ship to ship is in 3.7. Now I can't wait to be boarding a ship from a station without needing to go outside first. And even more exciting is boarding other people's ships. Both friendlies but you know mainly enemies. Also this enables the addition of larger ships like the Hull Sea making it into the game meaning larger cargo runs will be an option which in turn creates player driven escorting missions as well anyway number 10 is the law system now this is coming in 3.6 this is something which i feel will make the current alpha a whole lot more interesting currently the reputation system is not all that fleshed out and players just rely on weapons free zones to offer protection and just have to accept it if they are killed by another player this is still likely to be the case, even with the law system, and it's how it should be. But it would also mean that in safer areas of space, AI law and players will actually attack anyone who breaks the law. Also, the places with the armistice zones will become protected by actual AI ships and turrets rather than stopping people from drawing a weapon. Obviously, don't expect to get away scot-free at Jump Town. That is at your own risk. But the law system will make piracy a more challenging and interesting mechanic and hopefully encourage a little less griefing should it occur. Now, at number nine is the player status system. This is coming in 3.7. It's quite an interesting one because currently we only have health, stamina and oxygen to think about uh, to ensure that our character is performing at its peak. Coming in 3.7 will be the additions of thirst, hunger, rest, inebriation, hygiene and temperature. Now this is all a little 50-50 with the community, but I'm very happy to get these survival elements in. Although they won't be life-threatening if not looked after, they will have knock-on effects like decreasing or increasing the player's stamina and abilities. Something else interesting about it is that the AI will also take their own status into consideration when it comes to making intelligent decisions. I'm interested firstly into how players will maintain their levels, maybe buying or making food, having to sleep on occasions, maybe taking a bath and ensuring that you're wearing enough clothes for the environments, but also how will the AI take care of themselves? Probably a big part of this is the subsumption NPC 24 hour cycle, but all in all, this will be very interesting. Now at number eight is the DNA face customization. I have to say I'm pretty bored of that, you know, everyone looks the same. The DNA face customizer means players can really create a unique avatar that suits them. 
I'm hoping that this coming in 3.5 will allow us to all look so individual that we can actually recognize friends. But with it coming with the addition of female characters and hopefully the hair tech, it's going to be quite interesting. I do hope that I'll be able to choose my actual face for my character, considering I got scanned at CitizenCon, but I'm not sure on that yet. Now, at number seven is the ship rentals. This is coming in 3.6. Obviously, this has a lot of importance for many players as most people only have access to a very limited number of ships. We do currently have the ability to buy ships in-game with UEC, but the prices are very high, uh, and rightfully so, but this means that most people are unable to buy different ships and take part in other areas of the game. Renting ship means this ability will be far more achievable, so everyone should have access to all the current gameplay mechanics, and I do expect this will require a lot of balancing in terms of how much you can earn money compared to the rental price, the rental time, plus payments for any damage that you sustained. Ultimately, everyone will be kind of at a level playing field and we can stop discussing how much ships cost with real money and start beginning to enjoy the grind to rent them or buy them in-game. Now, number six is healing. This is coming in 3.7 and currently only players can heal themselves provided that they have a med pen, and even that can be pretty buggy. This brings the ability for players to heal other players. This means that you, if you are injured or you run out of medipens, your friends or AI and strangers can come to the rescue and help you. I see this as pretty much the starting point for the medical gameplay career. Players could just buy hundreds of medpens and act purely as medics, ensuring that everyone on your team or on your org are at full health. So maybe rushing across a battlefield to someone's aid or maybe driving an Ursa rover to the injured comrade while a co-driver maybe puts down some fire. That will be a lot of fun. And for those interested in the medical career, don't expect too much, but at least you'll have a specific role to play. Now, at number five is the AI. In my opinion, AI is probably one of the most important aspects of Star Citizen. Just ensuring that the AI NPCs are realistic, believable, and actually useful this is going to be paramount to making Star Citizen the game it needs to be. This year, with the focus heavily on Squadron 42, AI will be one of the most updated features. This also means the PU will likely benefit from this, and we should see a lot of new AI updates throughout 2019. This includes things like better flight capabilities and behaviours to FPS intelligence and tactics. Not to mention when we actually get the ability to hire NPCs. That's going to be interesting. Uh, but 2019 is likely to be the year of AI, and I, for one, cannot wait for the challenge. Now, number four is the dynamic missions. This is coming in 3.8, so at the end of the year, this is one of the biggest features missing in the game right now. So unfortunately, with it slated for 3.8, it seems a little far away. What this does is bring a little more variation into the current missions, and instead of the usual go to A, get item, return it to B, it'll be go to A, search for the item, maybe get attacked, maybe not. Realize the item is missing, find the new possible location for the item, fly to that location, get attacked en route or not, get to the location, engage the bad guys, retrieve the item, go to deliver the item, potentially get attacked, so on and so forth. It just brings variations to how missions will play out, meaning that the missions won't feel so repetitive. Players will have to think and plan missions out rather than just already knowing the outcome. Once that comes in, I think the game will just feel so much more challenging and fun to play and encourage more team play as well. Now, at number three is the Unoccupied Stations. This is coming in 3.7 and 3.8. This was quite an unexpected addition to the roadmap. Basically, all the space stations we will get, like refineries, cargo depots and the various truck stops, they will have derelict variants. Some of them will have minimal crew and shopping opportunities, but obviously not be as busy as the rest of them. And all of these will be found in the, the sort of less traveled areas of space. Hopefully they will contain pirate residents resulting in maybe an FPS battle. But personally, I would love to find stations which contain creatures, aliens of some form, uh, maybe dangerous species which attack you when you enter. I would really look forward to NCIG create stations that are huge in size uh, think along the lines of Sevastopol from Alien Isolation, or even give us the ability to occupy and hold these stations as an org, creating an org versus org battle, maybe in the surrounding space and inside the station. Hopefully these stations will include missions like looking for a missing NPC or finding out why it's derelict and so on. But for the initial implementation, I'm not expecting much beyond the, the sort of coolness factor. Now, number two, uh, planets. 
So Art Corp is coming in 3.5, Microtech is coming in 3.8. New locations are obviously exciting. We already have Hurston and its landing zone, Lawville. In a few days, we will have Art Corp and its landing zone, Area 18. But at the end of the year, we will have Microtech and New Babbage. This is the home of the Moby Glass, and it's a, quite a unique planet. It brings snowy biomes, pine forests, and some more inhospitable style environments. Not to mention the cool looking biodomes that house the landing location of New Babbage. Once we get to this point, there will only be Crusader left until the whole of Stanton is realized. And as time goes on, each planet and moon will be populated with many more locations and planets will gain more hero locations containing shops, mission givers and player hubs and hangars. After that, which system will they look at next? We'll find out, I'm sure. Now, obviously on the top slot, of the most exciting features of 2019 is the new flight model. This, if I'm being honest, should have been in the game from the start rather than waiting this long to get it right, but that is the nature of game development. I think the new flight model will encourage many of the older backers who haven't really touched Star Citizen since 2.6 to come back and play again, but also keep the new players entertained as well. I've always been an average dogfighter, not great, but capable. With this new flight model, I am going to really focus and hone my skills as a dogfighter, likely becoming adept in one ship choice, but still being deadly in the other options as well. The depth of flight in Star Citizen means that each ship will handle differently to the other. They'll each fill a particular role and a style of play, but also require a deep understanding of how they are in all types of environments and with unique components. The new flight model may just be the first rung of the ladder to getting it to where it needs to be, but I am so looking forward to learning the strengths and weaknesses of each ship and passing that knowledge on through YouTube tutorials and to my org mates. Anyway, that is my list of the most anticipated features coming in 2019. Do let me know if it differs from your list or what you're most looking forward to. Although 2019 isn't really a patch that brings much in terms of exciting gameplay mechanics, I do feel it'll make the current alpha far more stable and robust. With that said, we are days away from 3.5. I'm starting to get very excited and I'm now working on this tutorial series to help new backers and veteran backers as well to understand the game even further. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more Star Citizen content and tick that little notification bell so you don't miss out. Also, follow me over on twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrothersryan as we'll be playing 3.5 as soon as Wave 1 is released. My fingers are crossed for the next couple of days. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time.